In December 1773, Robert Newberg filed a civil lawsuit against Thomas Batt. Since the chaplain had joined the regiment, there had been murmurings about his sexual past. His comments on the McDermott trial and his unusual appearance on horseback seemed to confirm that he was a man of poor character. After ministering to the Royal Irish for three months, it was apparent to Newburgh that he was no longer welcome in the regiment. At this point, no one filed formal charges against Newburgh for sodomy. The British Army was empowered to court-martial men for immoral acts, and Pennsylvania law prescribed death for men convicted of sodomy or buggery. Yet neither Bat nor anyone else pursued such a course. Instead, they hoped that simply embarrassing the chaplain would force him to voluntarily withdraw from the regiment and return to Ireland. But Newberg had no intention of backing down. In order to save his career, he had to defend his reputation. He could not admit to any sexual acts, but had to assert that he had not engaged in buggery. Yet it was not enough to simply deny that he had had sex with another man. He had to force Bat to retract his accusation in order to clear his character. For an heir to the Protestant ascendancy, this meant a lawsuit. For this first case, Newberg did not seek military justice, but filed a civil suit in the Court of Common Pleas for Philadelphia County. It appears that he first went to his commanding officer and complained about Bat, but Major Isaac Hamilton discouraged him from involving the army, as Bat was no longer an active officer. Moreover, by pursuing a civil action, Newberg could collect monetary damages so long as he could prove that Bat's malicious gossip had ruined his good name. In effect, Newberg sued to prove that he had not had sex with a man. It was common in early modern England and colonial America for individuals to seek justice against unwarranted gossip and rumors. Women accused of witchcraft sued those who claimed that they were in league with the devil, and in so doing, used the law to force their accusers to recant. Such women knew that not seeking legal recourse to correct a spurious charge was a tacit admission of guilt. In 